Cook back with another Color Art Design Team project. I'm going to take you on a few travels with me. First to Dewey, Oklahoma. My friends Candy and Hank Sharinga own Second Love Vintage Global Antiques there. They carry a few of my arts in the store and I set up each second Saturday in Dewey to show my work outside the store. One day when I was inside the shop, I mentioned to Candy that I like to find things that are rusty to paint. And she headed to the back of the store and brought back this can. She shoved it at me and said, here, paint this. Well, my brain started clicking and I knew it reminded me of something. It was the shape of something I knew, but I just couldn't put my finger on it yet. So I pondered on this for a couple of weeks. And then one day I was looking through some photographs from an old uh, album where I had been to Enfleur, France, and bingo, there it was. This old battered can reminded me of a carousel. But you don't necessarily need a five gallon lube oil can to make a carousel like I did. You could use a bucket or an old trash can. You also need white gesso, permanent ink markers, products from colorart.com including radiant gel, silk acrylic glazes, primary elements of artist pigments, primary elements clear glaze medium, chipboard shapes from GinaDesigns.net, and any brand of clear gloss acrylic seal. The first step is to draw or trace patterns of carousel horses. Be sure they all face the same direction, or if you happen to turn one the wrong direction, you can flip it over after you cut it out. Trace them on any heavy paper, cut them out, and then arrange one up, one down, one up, one down. In other words, every other horse will alternate one near the top of the can and the other near the bottom of the can. Do you know that most carousels rotate counterclockwise? To make them appear that they are trotting in the same direction, all the horses' heads need to be on the right. Trace these shapes onto the can, spacing them as evenly as possible. If you will start with an even number of horses and space them out around the can, then you will have the proper sequence of one high and one low and one high and one low. Paint each horse shape with white gesso. This will allow your colors to be more brilliant when you paint them with real paint. Paint the vertical poles just in front of the saddle area all the way down to the floor with Emperor's Gold Silk Acrylic Glaze from Color Art. Use Silk's Acrylic Glaze Solar Gold to paint horizontal stripes around the can. And here's my tip of the day. That can was heavy. So I placed it on a turntable. Actually, it was a plastic Lazy Susan from one of my cabinets. It made it my life much easier. I continued to paint silk acrylic glaze bands around the can in the colors of teal zircon and blue flame. If I hadn't been an artist, I would probably have been a scientist because I just love to experiment. I played with radiant gels and silk glazes together. The radiant gels added the texture I wanted on the tails and manes. Next I started mixing primary element medium with primary element pigments to get some of the horse colors and I just kept layering one layer after another, playing with it back and forth, different colors of different layers on top of each other until I came up with something finally that I liked. The biggest challenge on painting this can was that there were no flat surfaces. Everything was on a different plane with ripples and uneven surfaces and rough edges. So that made the edges of my paint not quite as clean as I wanted them. I used Sharpie markers to clean up those edges and to enhance some of the details. I traced chipboard designs from GenusDesigns.net with a gold Sharpie marker. I left the middle open so that it would, would have a lacy effect. And since the chipboard wasn't damaged by using them to trace, I still have them for a future project. The name of this chipboard is Flourish Set Amanda by GenusDesigns.net. And look how it looks once I sealed the can. I painted each horse a different color with different colors of mane and tail. When they were all complete and then dried and then outlined with Sharpie markers, I waited overnight to be sure everything was fully dry and then the next morning I sealed the entire can with clear gloss acrylic sealer. I'll have many more art projects for you in the future and I'd really appreciate it if you'd give me a thumbs up and follow my YouTube channel. 
I also have several tutorials on my blog and uh, information about the art shows that I attend. So you can catch me there at studio a b s e e dot blogspot dot com. Don't forget to visit colorart.com. There's a scavenger hunt going over there where you can win some wonderful prizes. And check out the beautiful chipboard designs at genusdesigns.net. Thank you for watching. See you next time.